Too often, I hear of people who want to start videos, but something simple is holding them back. Today, we're tackling three of the excuses that I will no longer be accepting for lack of content creation. Lighting, backgrounds, and audio. To do this, I'm going to share my no light setup, my one light setup, my mindset behind backgrounds, and a few tips and tricks to help you master audio. As always, links to everything mentioned will be down in the description below. Let's start with lighting. Now I've talked about lighting in the past, but I think it's time to actually show you what I mean. Here's an example of what it looks like to use natural light. The light from the window is pouring in. I've turned off all the lights in my office to keep the lighting consistent. Basically, artificial lights and daylight don't really play well unless you can completely control the artificial light. I normally try to position the window light at an angle or to the side of me to help create some depth to the shot. If that's too much, simply facing the window light usually works as well. The main thing that stops people from using natural light is that you can't really control it. The sun could move behind clouds or buildings or anything and really mess up the steadiness of a shot. For this reason, I usually suggest filming on a day or space where the light is most consistent. So more of like a cloudy day or if you're going to be outside in a consistently shaded area. Another tip to help keep the lighting consistent is to make sure that whenever you start filming using natural light, that you set your settings and dial them in. You don't want to use automatic settings because that's going to allow for the camera to shift during your filming and that makes it more difficult to fix or edit in post-processing. If you want to go the artificial light route, I am recommending the Ulanzi 40 watt light. This light comes in at about a mid price range. Um, so it's not the cheapest, but it's also not the most expensive but it is very reliable. The way that I use this light is I set it at a 45 degree angle. And the way to calculate that is if you're directly across from the camera, that's 180 degrees. And if this to the side of me is 90 degrees, I want the light somewhere in this general area. And the light is actually right here at a nice 45 degree angle. Personally, I have the light set to 5200 Kelvin, which is close to daylight. It's actually a little warm, um, but that's how I like my videos. And then I personally set it to somewhere between 30 and 50%, depending on where it is placed. And to keep things consistent, because sometimes I do move around and I get up in between these shots, I set my camera settings to match the light. So it's set to 5200 Kelvin and then my shutter speed, my aperture and my ISO are all locked into a single uh, position so that they're not shifting if I turn my head or get up or move or anything. Next, I wanna move on to the background. And for this one, I'm going to go a little higher level and talk about mindset when it comes to backgrounds. So I'm someone who watches a lot of YouTube and a lot of tech and camera YouTube. And normally in those types of videos, the backgrounds are very clean, they're pristine, they have a nice color cast, they maybe have some cool things on the wall. And when I decided to get into this line of YouTube, I quickly realized that, hey, if I wanna fit in, maybe I need those things. But when I started pricing some of those things, I noticed, hey, those things are out of my budget. Um, and that really discouraged me for a little bit because I wanted to appear to be the same. I want it to appear to be on the same playing field when it came to the visual aesthetics. I then heard a quote and a story um, that basically said that, you know, most people stop attempting to do the thing when they realize that they're not immediately going to see the same results. Um, once they realize that it's a little more difficult than they thought it would be, they stop. I was there. And then I made a decision that I have value that I want to provide. I have something that I want to give and I can't let something like the background of a video stop me from providing that value because at the end of the day, that is the thing that matters the most, the value, not the visual. Now, because I'm in camera and tech YouTube land, the visual matters a little bit, but I don't think the background matters as much. And so one of the ways that I fixed this problem was I have a practical light behind me. There's actually a lamp on this side as well. And 
I have a pegboard up, but that's pretty much it. I don't have any fancy uh, color casts. I don't have any fancy things on the wall and that's enough. The other way that I have distinguished uh, or gotten away with not having a fancier background is that I sit a decent way away from my desk and I film with a lower aperture. This allows there to be some blur so you won't necessarily notice that I haven't cleaned my desk or that there's things all over my desk and hopefully that's not distracting. I've also been coaching my wife to film her own videos and she films against a blank wall. So technically there are two shelves on that wall, but sometimes she films it tight enough to where you can't even see those shelves and it looks like a blank wall. And the thing that I tell her is that the most important thing is not the visual. It's not what's behind you. It's the value that you're giving and the value that you're providing to the audience. So if I could leave you with anything, as long as your background is semi clean or semi acceptable, as long as it's not too distracting, focus on giving and providing value over obsessing over your background. The last thing that I want to cover today is audio. And I've gone on record before and I'll say it again. You don't really have an excuse when it comes to audio. To drive the point home a little further, I'm going to include a clip right here of audio that was not post-processed, not using a microphone straight out of camera. And then I'm going to provide the cleaned up version of that audio. As someone who does love aesthetics and loves a clean look, I was reminded by when I watched it, I was reminded when I watched the video the other day. Um, As someone who does love aesthetics and loves a clean look, I was reminded about when I watched I was reminded when I watched the video the other day. Um, now, this isn't up to my personal audio standards as I've been using uh, microphones that provide a higher quality. But if you're someone who's just starting out and you don't have the money for the equipment or you don't have the equipment, this is acceptable. If you do have a little extra money to spend on gear, I've set my wife up with a Rode Video Micro. It's about $45 from Best Buy and she films with her phone. So she needs the phone attachment and that's about another $10. And I'll include a clip right here of what the audio for her videos sound like. Now there may be times when your child doesn't really feel like talking about the traumatic event right after it happened or if they're still dysregulated or, you know, things like that. Now the microphone that I use for these videos is the Rode Wireless Me. This microphone comes in somewhere between $145 and $150 from Best Buy. And it's the audio quality that you've been hearing throughout this entire video. Now I'm gonna go one step further and let you guys know that I always post-process my audio to give it an even more clean sound. Now there are several options and ways to do this. And the three that I'm gonna recommend and walk through today are Adobe Podcast, Descript, and Premiere Pro. For Adobe Podcast, it is completely free, but you do need an Adobe account to use this product. So you're gonna sign up for a free Adobe account. You're gonna sign in. You're gonna go to podcast.adobe.com. Once there, you're gonna choose the Enhance Audio option. You'll upload your file that you want to enhance the audio for. You'll let it work its magic, and then you'll be presented with a screen that has a slider on it and you can slide to decide how much enhancement you do or don't want. Once you settle on how much enhancement you want, you can download it and then upload it into your audio interface to continue your editing process. The next option is Descript and similar to Adobe, you will need to sign up, uh, but there is a free option. Once you sign up and sign in, you'll upload your audio clip and Unlike Adobe, the Descript option is going to be on the side panel, and I believe it's under something called Studio Sound. You'll check that little box, and then from there, you'll be able to, again, slide how much studio enhancement you want. And Descript also offers additional audio plugins and tools to help clean up audio or make additional adjustments from there. The method that I use is Premiere Pro, and so I import my footage, put it on the timeline, and then I visit the Essential Sounds panel. From there, you'll select what type of sound it is. I normally choose dialogue because it's talking. And then I usually always go with the preset 
clean up dialogue. This usually provides a nice base. And from there, you are provided other options to tweak and adjust and make the audio sound as you wish. I know I ran through those options fairly quickly. If you would like a longer video or a longer detailed answer or tutorial, please leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to jump on that for you. So if you're someone who's been struggling with lighting, mindset when it comes to backgrounds or audio, I hope that this video could give you a bit of a starting point and a bit of encouragement. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it as always. Until next time, remember to do the work, believe in yourself, and keep creating. Peace.